here. Someone may be looking for something a little spooky. Hello, my lovely friends. It's Margaret. Welcome or welcome back to the channel and welcome to the first in a five part series recommending books for the Amazing Readathon. If you are not doing the Amazing Readathon, you're still welcome here. Anyone who is looking for mystery, thriller, horror recommendations, I have five books for you. And then I have five books that I may be reading when it is my turn to be on Team Spooky. If this is not your team, don't worry. They are, it's coming. Speaking specifically to Team Spooky right now, there is going to be at the end of this video, five books that I am considering reading. And I want you guys to let me know which ones you think I should prioritize. That out of the way, let's talk about five of my favorite spooky books. The first one I'm gonna talk about is one I will not shut up about because I do not see enough people reading it. And I think there are a lot of people out there that, like it's not everyone's book. It is what, like there are people that definitely avoid it. It has trigger warnings out the wazoo. There is some dark, dark stuff that happens here, especially in regards to sexual assault. And yet it is one of the few books that has almost made me cry in joy. If you don't know me, hi, my name is Margaret. I don't cry over fictional things. And if a book can move me to tears, this almost had me crying in the middle of a Starbucks. That's, that's how good the ending is. Some of you may have already guessed based on the Starbucks story, but that book is The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchison. This is a story within a story type of book. We are following an FBI team and they are, I guess they'd be what you would call the Special Victims Unit. They specifically deal with crimes against children and they have just made a massive bust of a group of young girls. They were kidnapped and have been kept in captivity on this rich man's estate. He called these girls his butterflies. Each one of them had a butterfly tattooed on their back. And when they reached a certain age, he would encase them in resin to preserve their beauty forever. We are following this FBI team as they are interviewing one of the butterflies, Maya, who seems to be kind of the ringleader of their group. And they are trying to figure out, number one, what happened, but also how complicit Maya is in what was done to these girls. If you are someone who loves found family, this, this is a book for you. It takes a minute to get there. It takes a minute, but when you get there, emotions will happen. We also kind of have a little bit of a found family in the FBI team, but we don't get that so much in this book as we do in later books, because this is a four book series. Each one follows them with a different serial killer. This book is peak unreliable narrator. Like Maya is very blunt. She is very like antagonistic. She is sarcastic. She is all these wonderful things, but she also is very careful in how she tells the story. Speaking of narration, I will say this is one I do not recommend as an audiobook, although the audiobook is fantastic. It's just the way that this story is told, it is told in parts and there aren't really good chapter breaks for it. This book is a book about stolen youth and the just the resilience of women and the things that we will do to survive. After that, I have to recommend My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. If you are interested in trying out Stephen Graham Jones's work, I highly suggest that you start with this series. Number one, because it's my favorite. It's my favorite thing he's ever written. And it, I think it is the best out of the things I've read from him that he's written, which is not yet a lot. There's there's way more than I need to read from him, so that may change. But I do think that if like you're looking to get into horror, if you're looking to get into this author specifically, this is a good book to start with. This is the book. This is the book that made me a horror girly. I don't know how that happened. I'm so confused. I want to go watch slasher movies now. Speaking of slasher movies, in this we are following Jade Daniels. She is obsessed with slasher films. Everything in her life she views through the lens of a slasher film. We are following Jade Daniels as she is kind of navigating the end of high school and dealing with that kind of coming of age part of life and trying to figure out what is her next step. Or she's trying to, she's thinking about it, and then people start turning up dead in very violent, gory ways. And Jade is like, I have been training for this my entire life. I have to go find the final girl. The way that Stephen Graham Jones is able to use Jade's point of view, and then she does these little essays about slasher films and the themes in slasher films and how some of them are related that made me go, I want to go watch all of these movies. But also as someone who hasn't seen none of the movies, it provided just enough explanation that I was able to follow what was going on in the narrative without like needing to have watched the movies. Like it's just such a fantastic 
way to explore theme and all of that. This is part of a trilogy. I believe each of the books has a different like specific theme because this one was slashers. The next book which is Don't Fear the Reaper which I absolutely adore as well. That one is true crime. I don't know. I think the third one is going to be monster movies. That is going to make an appearance later on in this video so you tell me if that's what you think is going to happen. You can just see how much Stephen Graham Jones loves horror and slashers in particular. I will let you know if you can't deal with body gore, don't watch this. If you cannot deal with like the violence against animals, although I think the violence against animals is more the second one where like there's just some weird like creepy animal horror stuff that's gross. This is mostly body horror especially at the end. This book is a fantastic meshing of classic horror films and indigenous lore. The way that he's able to tie those two things together just chef's kiss. It is. I also love this because we have a badass female main character that I just, I love. She is one of the best written female main characters I've ever seen. I've ever seen a man write. Like, there was not a single moment in this book where I was like, this was written by a man. Mm -hmm. Not a single moment in this book. Based on this and based on what he had in The Only Good Indians, I, I feel like he gets it. Jade is also like a loner in search of belonging. Like, she acts like she doesn't want to belong and yet you can see her crying out for community and belonging throughout this entire novel. After that, I want to talk about The Shadow Sister by Lori Weed. In this, we are following Casey. We pick up in the middle of a search for her sister. Her sister has been missing for about a week. Casey has like a very fraught, complicated relationship with her sister, and she's struggling with the fact that her mother is having them put on this very happy, cohesive family persona because both Sutton and Casey are black, and her mom knows that people are going to be less likely to look for them. Her mom is trying to counteract that in the way that she is presenting them to the family and pulling media attention in through this kind of happy family narrative. She loves her sister, she wants to find her, but she also kind of hates her sister. This book picks up right before they end up finding Sutton, only there is something about Sutton that is not quite right and Casey is going to get to the bottom of it. This is a beautiful, emotional, eerie horror book. There is so much in here that you j is just so slightly off that like you can't really put a finger on necessarily what is off about it, but you're, something is not right here the entire time. Very much what Casey is dealing with and going through. This one is very much about family and perseverance, and specifically the perseverance of Casey and Sutton's family. Her father is a historian who has been digging back into their family's history, and so Casey has been learning about her family who were enslaved and ended up being able to escape. They were able to escape and find their way back to each other through this perseverance, and I just, that was such a lovely, like, theme going throughout the entirety of the book, and I love the way that it tied into the family history. This is a slow build mystery that's a little weird. It's got such wonderful evocative writing. You will find yourself laughing. You will find yourself rolling your eyes at some of the stuff Sutton and Casey do. Like you just, like there is so much going on here. And it also has like one of my favorite endings of all time. Like just the way that Lily left off. Like it was so perfectly satisfying, but also I could have done with more books about these characters. Like, I was not ready to leave, and yet it was the perfect time to leave. I also want to recommend a book that I don't see a lot of people talking about, and that is Black Rabbit Hall by Eva Chase. This is very much in the vein of the gothic house type of mystery. We're following two points of view, one in the past, one in the present. The present is Lorna, and she is currently looking for a place to have her wedding, and she remembers this really gothic looking old mansion as she's been trying to find in the English countryside. All she has to go on is a picture of her when she is a child and she stumbles upon Black Rabbit Hall and thinks that this might be the place. And of course she goes up to the house and is like, hey, uh, I would like to rent out your crumbling manor for my wedding. Our past timeline is following Amber Alton who lived in Black Rabbit Hall when she was a child and it follows the path of her family after tragedy strikes them. I cannot tell you more than that because it will spoil some weird things. These dual timelines build off of each other and intertwine with each other so well. And the way that Eva Chase is able to like, like she has you going in one and then she switch, like the where she switches and when she switches, just fascinating. Like this is, if you like the death of Mrs. Westaway, you may enjoy this one. I liked this better than The Death of Mrs. Westaway, but uh, it's got a few extra elements that The Death of Mrs. Westaway didn't really have. Like The Death of Mrs. Westaway, it is a book that is centered around family secrets, and it is a 
really screwed up family that is going on here that we are piecing things together with. And there are some moments where you're going to really question some things uh, and also just be disturbed. This is great if you like weird old ladies and creepy old houses with secrets. Final one that I have for you guys is Ghost Squad by Clarabelle A. Ortega. In this one, we are following Lucelli and her best friend, Sid. They get their hands on a magical spell and accidentally unleash angry spirits upon the city of St. Augustine. And it is just hilarious watching them try to figure out how to undo this. If you are looking for a fun, spooky story, this is it. This is the book. It also goes by very quickly and it has a wonderful emphasis on family. Lucelli can see, like her family has the talent to see ghosts and so Lucelli can see these ghosts and they just kind of hang around the house like still interacting with her, still talking with her, all of that good stuff. It's just kind of fun and wonderful to see how that goes. This is also one of the best like middle grades when it comes to explaining that yes it actually is the children's problem to solve. This is not a book where you will be asking okay but where are the adults and why aren't they helping you? The adults are there and they are helping and when they can't help there is a legitimate reason for them not being able to help. Also I'm partial to this because it's set in Florida and I have been to St. Augustine and it's just kind of fun to see a little bit of my home state in here. We are going to go real quickly through the books that I'm thinking about reading. The first one is Warrior Girl Unearthed by Angeline Bully. This is a YA thriller. I loved her pre previous book, which is The Firekeeper's Daughter, just absolutely adored it. It was so well written. Like, it's one of those books that you sit down and you read it and you go, this is your debut novel. I am very excited to get to this one. And from what I remember, Firekeeper's Daughter was really easy to start and just keep going with. So I am hoping that I will have the same thing happen here. After that, we have The Angel of Indian Lake by Stephen Graham Jones. This is the final book in the Indian Lake trilogy and I'm just, I'm ready for it. I, I, mm. This might be the fastest I have gotten to a sequel since Painted Devils was released. I'm like ready to go. I have specifically been saving this for Amazing Readathon because I know that this will be one that I'm gonna like, I have the audiobook already, I'm gonna be able to start it and I'm gonna be able to just like rush through the entire book because I'm gonna, it, it, like it's going to grab me. I know that that's what's going to happen and I am so excited for this. Moving on to the more cozy mystery side of things, I have Pride and Prescience or A Truth Universally Acknowledged by Carrie Bebris. I believe we're following Elizabeth and Darcy as they are doing mystery type things. I grabbed this from a friend, I've got the first two books and I'm going to read this one and see if I want to keep them and if not they are both going out the door. Speaking of sequels that I need to get to, I loved the first three books in this series. Like I ate them up. They were so good. And then I did not know this, but like there's another part of the series that the author wrote and they're like separate things with our character solving more mysteries. I just, I love this main character. That is The Box in the Woods by Maureen Johnson. The first one we're following Stevie Bell. That's truly devious as the first book, but I have for reasons I do not own this one, but I own the fifth book in the series, so I need to read this so I can get the fifth book off of my physical TBR. And then our final possibility is The Whispering Dark by Kelly Andrew. I read her sophomore novel, Your Blood, My Bones. Yes, it's Your Blood, My Bones earlier this year uh, along with The Shadow Sister. I did not get on as well with that one as I would have liked, but that specifically has to do with some stuff that happens at the end that I know, thanks to that book, does not happen in this book. Look, I have a feeling I am going to adore this book. It's going to be so, so good. I'm so excited. Um, so in my next videos, I'll be very nice and put together and like I'll look like I belong in the video, but today you get editing, Margaret. And the reason you're getting editing, Margaret, is because uh, I got something in the mail that I forgot I was getting and I was like, you know what? I don't need two of these. Why don't I see about getting this to one of y'all? Uh, so here's the deal, because of how I ordered my bookmarks, because I wanted a full set of the bookmarks, I ended up with two of the official Amazing Readathon bookmarks. So here's what you need to do if, if you want a chance at this little guy coming your way. I want you to go to Brianna's announcement video and I want you to share it on your social media platform of choice. It can be Instagram, Twitter, Threads, 
TikTok, any of that stuff. In fact, I'll have her actual TikTok video linked down below in the description as well. So you can just like, if you're on TikTok, you can just go and, and do that. However you want to share it, share it. Once you've done that, I need you to come back and find your team's recommendation slash TBR video. And I want you to leave a comment telling me number one, what is something that you are looking forward to reading during the amazing readathon? And then number two, just let me know which platform you promoted Brianna's video on and what your username is on that platform. That seems to be the fairest and best way for me to be able to keep track of this. Since these videos are going up one a day, I will keep this giveaway open until 11.59 Eastern Standard Time on June 1st. I will announce the winner on June 2nd during my sprints, which start at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And now that that is out of the way, you guys are done with my messy self and we will go back to the video. And there you have it. There are 10 books that you may or may not have known about that you could potentially use in the Amazing Readathon. Or if you're just in general looking for spooky books. Again, if this is like before the readathon and you're on Team Spooky, let me know in the comments which you are most interested in me reading. I'm going to be trying to vlog as I go through this and so you'll be able to get some of my feedback and find out what I think about it. If you're looking for the next part of the series, which is the science fiction books, that's what's coming tomorrow, you can check up here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the vibes, the subscribe button is right down here. That is it for now, my friends. Happy reading, and I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy, nerdy things. Bye!